Too few. <laughs> Hello. I'm waving with my hands. Lauren's waving with her feet. We're both here today. Let's go, let's say hello and join in today. So hello, welcome to our Restore and Recharge practice here on Wednesdays. Every day we have something almost new, and if not new, check it out in the archive. We also know that our online members portal has had a little bit of issues. We're sorting those out as we speak and further into today. So stay tuned, be patient. We thank you for your patience, and we will get that up and running in no time. We'll start today with our breath, getting into our breath and our hip bars to get that balancator chair like we have to my left. Maybe we'll have to do some hip hulas here because they're my, some of my favorite too, but also revisiting our hinges today. So whether you have your rolling pins for balance or your kettlebell to lift, let's check that out. Stand, sit. I'm gonna start standing with my hands on my belly. Nice big power position here, my second stance. And I'm gonna gently close my mouth here in a second. We're breathing in and out of the nose, aiming to fill the belly and down. In and out of the nose and exhale. Repeat. Exhale. Repeat one more on your own. Inhale through the nose. In a second, exhale. And let's take a four second inhale together. Starting now. Four, three, two, one. Feel the belly. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Hold empty for four. Inhale for four, three, two, one. And hold full for four. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Hold empty. Fill one more time. And hold. Exhale. And hold. And resume your normal breathing which is including through the nose. That could be normal breathing. That could be defined as normal breathing. From our breath, we'll get into our head and neck. Pulling the crown of your head tall, slowly flex the spine, getting the chin towards the sternum. Maintain tension on the front as we slowly transition back into extension of the neck, looking towards the ceiling. Pull your crown of the head high for one more time. Repeat the flexion at the neck, tucking the chin. Return to a neutral gaze straight ahead with the chin pulled in. Gently lateral bend to a side. Between the ribs and the hips on my right side, I'm pulling down to help me go to the left. We'll pull to center. Lateral bend the other direction ear towards shoulder, anchor and st st stabilize through the core. Return to center. Repeat one more lateral bend, pulling down on the obliques, squeezing the bum, and maintaining your breath to tall, and repeat. Lateral bend and center. Lastly, at the head and neck, add the rotation. As we look to rotate over our shoulder at the head and neck, keep our shoulders and hips forward and grow tall or lengthen the spine as we rotate. Rotate looking over left, grow to center. Grow as you rotate looking over your alternate shoulder and return to center. Repeat one more, grow tall and center. And last repetition. Crown of the head tall, add the rotation, and return. Place those hands down low and gently talk to our shoulder blades. Elevate or shrug our shoulders, round or drive them forward, pull them down, and retract. Alternate the direction, 
by rolling low or driving low, pushing forward, shrugging or elevating, and retracting. Hold them low and open the hands to the side. At the side, repeat, elevating the shoulders in a shrug, pushing forward, pulling down and retracting, and then reaching low and forward and up and back. Pull your armpits low and return the hands towards overhead. In your overhead position, let's check that the rib cage is down, the butt is squeezed, and the same thing, shrug a shoulder, round forward, pull down, retract, it's a tough one, and then pull low, reach forward, shrug up, and pull down. Return those arms to low and shake out. We'll come back to up top, but right now let's get talking to those feet in some of our silly walks. We'll start our first silly walk with a heel strike. Can you excite that heel pad? Get that heel pad of the tripod excited. Start with a heel, let's just switch and do the same thing on the other side. Transition weight, pressing through one, accepting on the other. Hold your balance better like Lauren or move side to side like me. That's the excitement of the heel pad. Now let's get that toe pad excited. Let's just press on that toe pad for four, three, two, one. And then what about that pinky pad? Let's just press on it for five, four, three, two. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Did we do the heel already? Great. Then we, so we oh, yes, did, the, we right, so we did the heel, right. So three more times, just excite that toe pad, get nice and excited there, get it turned on. And then the pinky pad, same thing. Five, four, three, two. And then can you let those ankles wiggle? Let them be loose. Let's place that together in our first heel toe walk. Heel strike with the heel pad. Press off that big toe mound on the other side as the pinky accepts the load. Hold the balance in the middle, return to low, push off the back toe, heel strike through. Heel strike, transition to that lateral border of the foot, hold your toe balance, return to the ground, press through and repeat. Roll through the feet, stay, transition to the front leg if that's allowed, and a heel strike through on the alternate side. Heel strike, pinky side foot, roll to the balls of the feet, hold a balance if allowed, heel strike on the other side. One more time each leg as you roll up to the balls of feet, transition weight to a single leg, heel strike on the alternate side, and last roll up here, roll, hold balance, heel strike, and down. And again, let those wiggle out. At the head neck, we'll take those into those gentle figure eight shapes. Start in a subtle extension shape and then flex. Draw a circle looking over your shoulder and then continue looking towards the ceiling, bringing the nose towards the top. Return in the flexion shape, chin to sternum. Casually scrape the sternum to look lateral in a rotation and look to the ceiling and to tall. Repeat the direction for one time each way, extending the neck to the top, a small, slow rotation lateral and scrape the collarbone to center. Last time extending the neck to the top, Slowly rotate, looking over the alternate shoulder and nod your head down, taking a light sniff of the armpit, scrape across and return tall. Now playing with this part of our body, thinking about being on a roller coaster or an undulating kind of a rope. Let's play with our spine. Wide base might help. Squeeze your bum. Watch for the first couple and spend 30 seconds at home trying to figure it out. 
We'll start here by flexing our head and neck. We'll pull the rib cage down. Our hips are still stacked and we'll push our heart forward, slowly bringing it back into extension. At that point, we'll bring our heart down, rib cage down, flexing through the spine and extending through. Follow along, make it up. If you did it against a wall, or in this case, my bar, that would be a nice way again to show that it's your spine trying to do that movement and not the hips as much. Let's pause out front the way Lauren is right there. And let's reverse, pull in, flexion through the spine, and then heart forward. Pull in, flexion through the spine, and heart forward. And one more time, pull in, extend, and then flex in and just get tall. And shake it out. Silly walk number two. We excited those toe pads before, so let's lead with those this time. Toe point, press the big toe down, press the big toe mound down, and get those two front tripod points heavy. At that point, could we hold our balance and lower and press off the back leg? Point through, land on that toe ball heel. No heel yet, no. but I know, I know, I know, I said oh. heel. Heel, no heel yet, that was my, my bad cue. And now we're on our heels. And like before, we'll try to find that balance in the middle now. Press through the back leg, elevate to both. Find the toe balance, tippy toe out front, slow press down. The back heel won't come down. And then from there, we'll press to the front foot, hold the balance, carry through. Front foot flat, back heel stays elevated. Then press to the front leg again, hold your balance, carry through a leg. Front foot stays down, back's heel up. And last repetition here, balls of feet, carry a leg through, toe and descend. And can you wiggle them out yet? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right. We've been to the undulating rope or the roller coaster, and now we're going to go to the Ferris wheel. Drawing a circle on the wall in front of you, following along as we can. Watch if you want for the first one or two, and follow along at home. From this position, I'm going to slide my rib cage to the right, left, the left. Then I'll pull my rib cage to the right. Other movements include pulling the rib cage down and lengthening the rib cage up. When we lift our rib cage up, that's not your rib cage, that's your shoulders. Gently check that out. Okay, shake that out. Here we go. I'll slide to my left. I'll pull down. I'll pull across, compressing on my core here, reaching lateral, lifting up and over. My hips don't move. My rib cage is doing a very subtle slide to side to side or slide action. I'll lift, I'll return center. Repeat the, excuse me, repeat the alternate direction, lateral slide, pull down, slide across, reach up. This is core, this is coordinating work. And can you feel your abdominals assist you or are they locked up? They don't really wanna move. But for 10 more seconds, just have a little bit of fun here, working through. Ferris wheel, mobilizing the rib cage. Super important to mobilize that rib cage and shake out. One final funny walk. Any requests? No. Okay. Then we're going to go tippy toes all the way there across the room and then heels all the way back. Let's excite that foot tripod. First, let's start on Lauren's toes, keeping the bum squeezed, stiff knees, take a thousand steps across the room. Take super small steps, squeeze your butt cheeks, and for 990 more steps, okay, maybe 800, and then, okay, 700. Don't be a penguin. So Lauren called me out for doing my side to side. She's right. We want to be nice and tall for like two more steps. 
Can we stay on those toes? And now let's take 10 seconds to lower. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and down. Whew. Let's switch one last time on those heels this time. This time, the penguin won't be as obvious as, say, a hip hinge or pushing your bum back. Let's save that for our swings. But right now, we're stacked, super stacked walking on those heels, maybe using your wall or your kitchen counter for a little bit of help here. Knees are straight. Knees are straight. Five steps, that's about a thousand, and then down. Whew. Mm. Lastly, with the rib cage, roller coasters, Ferris wheels. Can't forget about that merry-go-round but let's not make it feel like the teacups, okay? Personally, the teacups, a little bit too aggressive. I could do a merry-go-round, yeah, whoa. But merry-go-round, I got that. We can do a merry-go-round here. Casually, open up your wide stance. If you spun around, take a moment. Woo. Open up your stance, squeeze your butt. From here, we'll slide to the left. Slowly reach to the front. Pull around the back. Ask your core to do this work. Repeat one more to the front, to the side. Pulling yourself around the back. Once you reach your original lateral position, return to center. And switch your direction. And I'll go front, sorry, excuse me, lateral. And then I'm going to go back. Lateral back. And maybe that's actually the same direction, Ian. So i got to switch and then push your heart forward. Extension through the spine. I love those hands either where Lauren has them right there or in my position on those hip holsters to really feel that activity in the glutes. Now for 10 seconds, gently make up any cool little pattern that you can. As important as it will be getting into our spine core bracing, our strengthening ex exercises, having that nice supple spine as well will help in any practice exercise-wise or in any pursuit of your lifestyle activity. What are we doing now? Ooh, that hip flexor lunge. Grab that mat if you need something for those knees. We'll get low into our hip flexor lunge here and get started. As Lauren's getting her mat, we'll talk about that back ankle. Yeah, it's a little bit tough on the wood here. So get, get a nice surface. Here we go. So just quickly, talking about the, the back ankle, ankle, we want to avoid our sickled ankle shape such as this. And in your lunge, continue to pull the ankle to the midline as much as you can. In a lunge position, like hike and level the hips and extend and then tuck under. At this point, we're going to slide the hips forward by pressing the knee towards over the toe. Squeeze your back bum cheek, and now press this leg forward, pushing yourself back to tall. Cramp up in the middle position here and hold for three, two, relax. Maintain your tuck, press the knee towards over the toe, keeping the foot flat and heavy through all three points again of the tripod. Squeeze your back butt cheek, push through the front leg and meet in the middle, feeling a nice loaded stretch on that quad area here. We into that? Just meet me. We'll do that one more time. Gently let that knee go forward. Squeeze your back buck cheek, push the front leg forward and end up in a tall position, Lauren demonstrating right about there. Relax tension. This feels great. Switch to the other side. Level hips, tuck or scoop, extend, find that place in the middle. From here, again, we're encouraging the knee in the front to go towards over the toe. Squeeze the back butt cheek, press this front leg down and forward and meet this tension in the quad and the hip extension tension in the back in the middle, that holy cow feels like a lit up stretch right here and then relax. Readdress, level. Breathe, and same thing. Full foot in the front, no sickled ankles in the back, and press the knee over the toe. 
Squeeze the back leg, push the front leg to a tall position, meeting in the middle, breathing, 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 and relax. I think that was two. We'll do third final repetition on this side. Level hips, full foot pressure on the ground, knee towards over toe. Squeeze your back butt cheek and press through the front leg, resisting with the back, getting to a tall position, relax tension, and slide underneath. Same idea with a lateral facing leg. Move a leg to the front, and then open towards the side. We would like a lateral facing foot and kneecap, but forward facing hips. This could also be an appropriate position on that 45 degree angle, based on what your hips are saying. From this position again, making sure we address the hikes and the tucks. This time, we'll press the knee towards over the toe. Squeeze this butt cheek here, push that way, and meet in this tall position in the middle without overdoing it. Work in those hips and relax for a second. Make any adjustments you need to the, the, the rigidity of the floor. Two more, we hope. We're gonna press the knee towards over the toe, squeeze this butt cheek here, and then press with all your safe power that way, match it with this butt cheek tension here, and push yourself to a super tall position, and relax. Third and final repetition here, Knee towards over toe. I'm further, how about you? Cramp up this butt cheek here and press through the bent knee, getting yourself back to a super tall position and then heel toe that leg to the front and return the leg underneath. Other side, final side. From the center, open up to have a lateral facing knee. Extend those hips, level them out. Press the knee towards over the toe, squeeze the back butt cheek, and push energy down into the floor this way so that you go the other way to that tall posture. Relax tension. Slowly encourage that knee towards over the toe. Squeeze your back butt cheek with some core brace action. Press energy over this lateral direction to go the other way, to tall, 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 and relax. Final repetition of this for today, we'll go knee towards over toe, cramp up the back buck cheek, press through that front leg, and getting yourself back up to a nice tall position. Relax the tension, return the leg to the front, and then underneath. From here, let's just do something a little bit different and we'll do our hip bar from the ground and we'll try to get to that later today as well. So on those hands and knees this time, let's do a little partial hip bars here. Look to Lauren's side profile for nice directions as well. Can I just move that for one second? Okay, so this is good here. From the all fours position, hover one knee or pick one knee up off the floor. Hopefully I didn't change your low back shape. From here, Try to pull your knee forward, keeping your tailbone long. Mine doesn't go very far forward. Three, two, place that low. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna keep our tailbone long as we pick up our knee and flex the hip or pull the knee forward as to try to get through those uprights or field goals that are those uh, forearms there. And down. Repeat one more time. Hover, lift, compress in that hip, and pull the knee forward for three, two, turn low. Hover the other side, maintain stability and tension through the arms, and pull the knee forward for three, two, and relax. Shake those hands, take a second, reassume the grip, now out to the side lateral. This time hover the original leg, and with a bowl of punch on back, lift the leg towards the side. Hold for three, two, slowly bring the leg underneath. Repeat the laterals other direction, 
hover, other leg, I'm sorry. So hover, open up out to the side and your hips are level, your chin is in like a plank for one more second and return that leg in. Make those neutral fist adjustments if we need to based on the wrist extension. And one more time each side, as we go out to the side here, our hips are still level. Three, two, slow in. Alternate side, hover, compress in the hip. Safe knee bend, reach out to the side for three, two, and down. And then lastly, the hip extension. I'll turn to the side for this one. So in our hip extension, we're gonna lengthen out the spine, hover one leg, safe knee bend, and try to get that femur bone parallel out the back as we extend our hip. And we'll hold for three, two, and return that underneath of the hip. Alternate the side, compress in the hip first, safe deep knee bends, extend the hip with a bent knee, aiming to get the knee in line with the shoulders. Slowly return the leg underneath and repeat one more time on the other side. Extend the hip with our bent knee, keep the rib cage connected to the hips, making sure we're using our glutes, not our low back, and slowly underneath. We always get competitive here, but work in a safe range where you do feel your glute, glutes is in plural, and whole body work and not just your back here. And slowly pull underneath and off those hands. Whew. Let's stay low, Lauren. We'll stay low. We'll work on one core movement here and we'll get into our get up protocols on the, we're good. Get up protocols up. For today, as Lauren doesn't have a microphone, we'll use this opportunity to talk about some core movements, starting with the hip extension to give those hands a little break. And because that's one of the first moves of that get up. Yep, excuse me. New camera, still gotta figure out those angles. So this is a hip extension, good, don't do it quite yet, but great. We talked about that foot tripod. So let's get nice and heavy on those feet. Heels, big toe mounds, lateral border. From here, casually tuck your hips underneath and gently extend or promote the arch shape in the low back. Alternate that one more time into a tuck shape, an extended shape, and one more time, slowly tuck or scoop under. Squeeze your glutes and bum cheeks, and from here, articulate one vertebrae at a time up towards the shoulder blades. We're extending our hips, moving through the spine from the bottom to the top, and holding the tops position. With hands on the floor as fists, or fists over the chest, for 10 more seconds, continue to drive your feet heavy in the floor, pull the knees together, squeeze the butt cheeks, brace, breathe, hold your position but chill, and now slowly articulate that tension down the spine, working from the top towards the bottom, as I'm demonstrating in this fold, or a cat cow, and relax. Take a moment off, let's do that one more time. Start with a slightly extended or spacious back here in the floor. Tuck under those hips starting at the very bottom. The feet are heavy, the hips are engaged with the core. Extend the hips now with a glute squeeze, rolling up the spine, approaching the shoulder blades. Hold for 10, nine, eight, high tension hands, high tension core, not high tension face, for three more seconds, hold your position but chill, and slowly articulate down the spine again, top to the bottom, and the belly button, or the backside of the belly button does not touch the floor until the segment above it does. Make sense? I hope so. Before your butt. Lauren always says it better than me. Great. From here, we're going to follow Lauren along here as we do our get up. We'll place a single hand to the ceiling, and that same side leg is bent. From here, Lauren will push or extend through the hip, ending up on the elbow. From here, 
we'll get to the tall sit. In the tall sit, we'll bridge or sweep the leg underneath. Bring the hip through or overhead. Square up your lunge. Stand up tall. And pull an arm down. Repeat. Same side, but down. Don't hog the stage. We'll go arm, arm overhead. We'll drop a leg out to the side, to the back, I'm sorry, and low. Open up, watch the dowel, hinge on the hip, sweep to tall sit, find the elbow, core brace as you press away. From here, we'll finish with our final core movement, our hard style plank or high tension plank. For this, Lauren will flip over, and again, extending through the arms. So modify your position maybe, Lauren. Uh, yep, yeah, back up a little bit. Yeah, and modify, go, yeah, and go modified, modified plank. Like from my hips. Right, and knees. Oh. The wood is so much harder than this rubber, here we go. So in our plank here, just as we just gently cue it up, we're again looking for a nice straight line between the head, the shoulder blades, and the hips. If we can hold this with our tension, great. Could we tuck the toes this time then, elevate the knees, and hold that same position, same standard, the slight variations here in the head and neck, but for 10 more seconds now, squeeze your bum, brace your core, pull the floor together to create that high tension. And again, I promise I'm not gonna do it, but if I came over and I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> and relax, and relax. Promise to never do that in person or with Lauren here, but we wanna have that in our thought here, creating that high tension, rigid position for some strength. I wanna do one more, so let's do that together here. One last time, holding our high tank, high plank tension here. Let's start in three, two, one. Grip the floor, squeeze the bum, brace the core, high tension. And when you do the one thing, like breathing, squeeze your bum again. And then pull your armpits low for one more second and relax. Let's get to our backside again. I'm going to finish to standing with one more get up. This time I'll have my left hand at the ceiling and my left leg bent. We'll extend the hip like Lauren here, extend the hip to the elbow, and get to that tall sit. At the tall sit, we'll sweep and catch up, and then extend the hip through, bring a leg to center, and stand up tall. Return to low. Clear your space, tripping hazards out of the way. And we have our light dumbbell that we'll get into here, as well as our body weight windmill. Save the dumbbell for a second. Lauren will grab her club. First, we'll set up some hinges and then integrate that windmill as we can. Setting up with two feet underneath of our hips. Let's chop, chop, and press our butt back. Butt back. Take a moment. Now extend the arms and place the hands about at the kneecaps. Are your shins vertical? Are your arms vertical in relationship to the floor? If not, push your bum back a little bit extra to get the hamstring load, and from here, extend the hips to the top. Repeat, set up a hinge, hips go back, find forearms on the shins. Can we find the foot tripod, press the butt back, feel some nice load on hamstrings, press your feet into the floor, creating that tension to drive through. Repeat one more. Hip hinge, vertical shins throughout, maintain our long spine like our plank, hold for a second, create tension by driving the feet into the floor, and squeeze or extend the hips to up. Grab that dumbbell, and either from a high split stance, say here, or our low position. Lauren will be in the high one, and I'll be down low. Unlike the getup, we'll load the other side. So I have my right leg in my back here and a rack's position with my load. With low intensity, I'll press that load overhead. At the top, we'll shrug, reset that shoulder blade and pull, a groove pull here, returning the load or 
with dumbbell to a rack. Again, repeat, low tension up at the top, shrug the shoulder, pull through that armpit to set the shoulder blade, and then condition that elbow and bicep and grip strength to develop as we return to the rack. Switch to the other side, start in the rack. Extend that hip on the bottom, pack the shoulder down low. With low intensity, go towards up, extending overhead. Shrug, pack a shoulder, and then continue a pull to this rack's position. Repeat, low intensity up, shrug with those upper traps, pull down through that armpit with a nice pack, and then crush the dumbbell, find some grip, and keep pulling from the armpit, returning to rack. From here, stand up, relax for a second, dumbbells off to the side, so sorry about that, and continuing with a single leg hinge. With two feet underneath of our hips, we'll chop the hips. Feel free to repeat the original exercise or progress with us as we go. Setting up the hinge on two feet, transfer weight into a single leg, in this case it'll be my left. With the other leg, I'll slide across the floor, hold for a one 1,000, and then extend to the top, dragging that leg behind. Repeat it underneath, repeat on the other side. Modify your grip or your base of support. Set up your hip hinge. Like before, vertical shins, but this time we'll transfer weight to a single leg, slowly take the alternate leg and reach it towards behind, hold one 1,000, and then drag or extend it through by pushing the standing leg butt cheek. Alternate. Set up your hinge, vertical shins. Transfer your weight, slowly extend that back leg at the knee, maybe a toe point or the dorsiflex, and then extend the hip to tall with our butt squeeze. Adjust your base, set up your hinge, transfer your weight and slide slow across the floor. Keep the shin bones vertical, hold that second and extend to tall. One more time each side, widen base, set up your hinge, slowly transfer the weight and extend the leg behind. One 1,000, stand up tall, keeping the hip extended. Switch, hinge, alternate or trans transfer weight, sorry. Slide a single leg to the back, hold one 1,000, extend to tall, relax. Let's grab that wood dumbbell that's fallen off set. We'll return to our lunge position for the last time of our pull press here. Setting up your lunge stance, taking a moment, and from here, low intensity up. Low intensity up, follow that with our elevated shoulder or shrug, grip hard on your apparatus, pull, and continue to groove a pull to the rack position. Relax your grip. Repeat one more time, low intensity up, at the top, full extension of the elbow, and shrug. Set or pack our shoulder from the armpit and pull to the rack's position with core tension. Repeat on the other side. Get a grip. Get your rack's position, low intensity, overhead. At the top with that straight elbow, we'll shrug or elevate the shoulder, we'll pack or pull, and pull and groove a chin up to the rack. Low intensity up for the very last time here. Low intensity up, add our shrug, pack the shoulder, Grip that object, pull, groove, pull to the rack. Relax the tension. Take a second to come up. 
and place that off to the side. The last example of our hinge today, we'd like to revisit our windmill. For the windmill, I would set up my feet slightly wider than hips. My left leg here, I'll pivot on my heel, turning the foot sideways. And then based on your hip internal rotation on the other side, turn it. Mine would go to say to 11 o'clock if I was looking straight ahead at 12 a moment ago. From here, bend your leg facing sideways and jut, gently jut your hip out to the side. Gently jut. Stay tall. Soften the lateral leg. Gently jut the hip and hinge on the hip, sending energy back there with a super straight knee and extend the hip to tall. The front leg or my left leg here will bend at the knee. My back leg, my right leg will be stiff, 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 straightened at the knee as I push my hip back that direction, holding my balance and driving back to tall. Repeat that one more time. Chop the hip hinge, a soft knee on the lateral leg, stiffened knee on the back leg, and extend the hip to tall. Pivot feet to center, alternate our stance. Lateral facing foot, and for me, that one o'clock or just off center facing leg. Soften the one leg and jut the hip. Soften and jut. From here, soften the front knee. Continue the jutting of that hip as we hinge or press the hip back here. Hold for our second and drive to tall. Chop the hinge. Soft knee in the lateral facing leg with a stiffened kneecap on the other side. Hang for a second, drive to tall. Repeat one more time. You have that hip holster back there, feeling it. The hip hinge, soften knee with a stiff leg, press the hip back, engage, drive to tall, pivot to center and shake. I'd like to finish this today's practice on the bar. So grab the chair or your bar here and we'll continue or rather finish with the continuation of that hip bar from the ground. This was Lauren's newer version. It's all kind of the same, but different. And I hope I can get it right here because it was pleasant and not pleasant at the same time. So bent knee here. Standing on two feet, parallel quads, parallel stance, bend the outside knee without flexing the hip or bringing that knee forward. So Lauren's side profile there is showing what we want beautifully. From here, we're going to extend the hip, meaning push to the back, just like we did on all fours. As we push to the back, you'll slowly run out of room. And then from that position, bring the foot to the inside of the knee, and we have our lateral facing leg or knee. From here, lift up over that imaginary hurdle to try to bring it a little bit higher out at the side, and then pull in front, closing the hip. Repeat one more. Extend the hip to the back. Ribs are down, feeling glute tension, but no lumbar or low back discomfort. When you're out of room, we're tall on this inside leg as you bring the foot towards the inside of the knee. Hold for a second, and in that second, try to lift a little bit higher, and then nice and control, return to center, and extend. Same leg if we're allowed, other direction. Flex the hip, keeping the knee super tight to the body. Open up to the side, extending those hips forward. Perhaps lift a little higher, and it might create separation at the knee and then continue that rotation in the hip as you reach around to the back and pull into center. Repeat one more repetition here, your safety knee bend, keeping the foot tight to the body for as long as we can. And we open it out to the side now with our hips extended. Hold for the second, pretend to lift higher, create tension, 
and then roll in that hip as you reach to the back and then pull in quads parallel extension on the knee. That's a set. That is a set right there. Thank you for that one. Yeah, that was her idea. I just like it. Same thing on the other side. Without displacing the knee, flex or bend the outside leg harder than it seems without cramping up the hamstring or feeling too much anywhere else. From here, we'll extend the hip to the back. Our inside leg is tight and squeezed. Our outside hip is moving back. Then we, out of room, we'll bring the knee to the side. We're chasing that number four shape and trying to pull this up higher for one more second and then bringing that around to the front and extending the hip. Repeat, hip extension to the back, cramp up that lateral butt cheek, glute maxes as well. Bring the foot to the inside of the knee. Are those hips level? Lift that knee millimeters higher as allowed. I'm jealous of Warren's height right there today. Good, and then in, balance and center. Repeat the front direction for the last exercise of the day. Pull to the front in our hip flexion. Open to the side, keeping those hips forward. Lift higher for a 1-1000 and internally rotate on the hip, reaching behind and pulling in. Repeat one last repetition with control here as you flex the hip, tall on the inside leg, nice hip flexion, open to the side, could it go millimeters higher? And reach around, nice and control, and pull into center. Once the quads are parallel, extend the knee, have a seat, take a moment. Stay in front of that fan. So that was been our recharge and restore practice. We were, we were restoring from a long bike ride yesterday as we continue to pursue our trek to the cottage, maybe August long weekend. And we were recharging for another hot day outside in our backyard working with real life people. Thank you for being real people too. I know you're real people. I'm a real, I'm a real boy. So thank you for being with us today, celebrating your strength with some of our favorite movements. And if you have anything that you like to contribute with your favorite moves or th body parts that you want to work on, send us a note in the chat, put a comment down. We'd love to hear from you. My name's Ian, and this is Lauren. We're a one mic setup today. We'll get back to our two setups, and that way you can listen to Lauren nag me about my bent knees too, because we all have things to improve. Thanks very much. We'll see you again. Check out barsandbells.com for membership, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and like and subscribe whatever corner I put it in once we do that editing stuff. Have a great day. We'll see you on Friday for the same. Bye-bye. But different. Goodbye. Drink water. Drink water. Whew. We're still alive. We're still alive. We're still alive. <laughs> I'm thirsty.